Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is William Davis. I'm the Director of Education for Wilson Daniels and wanted to uh, welcome you uh, to... Thanks again for uh, joining us this morning. We are about to get on with uh, Corinne Perez, the new winemaker at uh, Maison Pierre Spar in Alsace. And what we're going to do is that we're going to talk a little bit about the 2020 vintage how that's all wrapping up in this unprecedented year, and what's going on with the uh, vintage that we're just about to release with the 2019 and 2018. So uh, let's give uh, let's give Corinne a uh, chance to uh, join us, since it is uh, five o'clock technically in their side of the world. And as soon as she gets on, uh, we will. We will see what's going on in the vineyard in Alsace. So, you know, as you uh, may well know, you know, uh, uh, Maison Pierre Spar has been around, the Spar family have been making wines since 1680. So a, a very long history uh, of winemaking here in the villages of Siegelsheim and Beblenheim, which they uh, moved their winery facility to in 2015. So, uh, you know, a lot of uh, changes in the winery. And, uh, you know, now with uh, Corinne at the helm, uh, she was with Maison Haller uh, for 17 years before coming on to uh, Pierre Spar. I'm really excited to see what, sh what processes and uh, what the philosophy of her winemaking experience mm -hmm. has been uh, at Haller and what she's going to do uh, specifically with Cremant and with some of the uh, soil types uh, that they're working with, with the multitude of vineyards in the um, in the Hogan, uh specifically, as Heller is uh, is located in the Bascon. So uh, let's see if we find Francois. Well, I see Francois. However, I do not see. I'm still waiting to see uh, where Corinne is uh, is located. And let's see if we can uh, get them on here in just a moment. So if you happen to have any questions, you know, feel free to, uh, you know, ask uh, on the uh, chat and we'll get those to uh, Corinne as, uh, as best we can. Uh, I know that she, uh, she's very excited about this vintage as we all are, uh, even though it was a, uh, a challenging one due to COVID, uh, the quality, at least the, uh, the initial reports are extremely high. So let's see if we can uh, get her on. All right. Well, it could very well be that they are, maybe because they're out in the uh, vineyards that they're having a little bit of a challenge uh, getting on. So uh, we will hold here for just a second until they, uh, until they get on. Um, you know, again, thanks for everybody that's uh, joining us. And I know that they should be on any moment. Yeah, good to see you too, uh, Nick. Uh, hopefully things are going well in New York with uh, you know, some of the updates. Uh, it is uh, a balmy 18 degrees right now in Denver, so uh, I am I'm, I'm dressed for the occasion, even though I'm indoors. It's finally good to uh, get some of the fall and winter hats out. Uh, tis the season. You know, we've been uh, waiting for some cold weather and a decent snap to affect some of the uh, fires that we've had in Colorado the the, the past uh, few months, um, and it's actually nice to see uh, a lack of haze in the air. Um, we currently have blue skies. So let us see exactly where she is. Um, here's hoping that uh, we get them on here any minute. So um, one thing I was going to, uh, to, to mention is on our uh, luxury offerings. Oh. On our luxury offerings, uh, in the past we have uh, always represented the uh, the Grand Cru's uh, that Pierre Spar works with, uh, specifically the Mombourg and Schoenenborg vineyards. Uh, the uh, 
and the Schoenborg, the 17s that we are currently, we currently have in stock in the United States, are a, a wonderful example of a short vintage um, and one of I, what I would consider one of the uh, last classic vintages uh, with a little bit more acidity and freshness uh, as a characteristic of the, uh, of the vintage and of the harvest and the quality of the grapes. But the uh, last three vintages have uh, really driven, uh, you know, both ripeness, um, concentration, and, uh, you know, extraction. So I'm really excited to ask Corinne about uh, the potential longevity of many of these wines. So let us see if, uh, in fact, she is uh, about to get on here. So give us just a moment. And here's hoping that uh, she joins us here. I'm just looking at the uh, bottom. So thanks for everybody uh, jumping in, joining us. And as soon as she gets on, we will go live in the vineyards in Alsace. What I'll do in the, uh, in the interim is that we will, um, I'll put the uh, backdrop of the uh, winery. Um, this is where we did our uh, last IG, uh, where we got a chance to speak to Corinne, as well as Francois, who's the uh, uh, the export director for Maison Pierre Spar. Uh, so this is the uh, new property in the uh, in the village of of Bebelenheim. Ironically, it is uh, older. The uh, buildings are older and more ancient than the uh, the building that they left in Siegelsheim, uh, the original and historic winery uh, that was uh, built both in the uh, 17th and 18th centuries. So as soon as she gets on, here's, uh, here's hoping that we can find them. Well, I would say now would be the uh, time to, uh, you know, add any, any possible questions that you'd have for uh, Corinne. I know that we didn't have uh, an awful lot of time to speak to Corinne and the team, although uh, they are busy in the uh, winery now that uh, harvest is, uh, you know, at the end of its course for this year. Uh, so I know that Corinne and the team had, you know, a, a number of things to do before uh, 6 p.m. Uh, their time or European time to uh, to get in and join us so well thanks again for everybody uh, joining us again we are simply waiting for uh, Corinne and the uh, spar team to uh, jump on and uh, to spend some time with us talking about the uh, the 2020, 2019, and 2018 vintages. So um, bear with us and we will be on live, no talking to them. And what I'm doing is uh, just bouncing around uh, between uh, different vineyard shots. Uh, this one is uh, actually from the uh, top of the uh, Mamborg as it looks down into uh, Siegelsheim, uh, you know, uh, looking south. And yet a, another shot, this is uh, looking north to the, uh, to the memorial. Uh, so you'll see in that very faint uh, distance right next to the uh, tree in the middle of the uh, photo of uh, the American flag where the U.S. Serviceman Memorial is located right there in the middle of the Grand Cru of Mamborg. It 
So yeah, it appears that Corinne and the uh, team are having a bit of a challenge uh, in the vineyards with a, uh, with a connection. So hold tight, uh, bear with us, and you know, uh, we will get truly live shots here in uh, just a moment. So I should mention that uh, for anyone that is when we do get a chance to uh, travel to Europe and to Alsace, uh, if you've never been, I highly recommend it. The, uh, the food is absolutely stunning. And of all the regions in France, uh, from an architectural standpoint, it is uh, arguably the, uh, the, the prettiest of the group. Not to say that you don't get some wonderful uh, some wonderful architecture and buildings uh, in uh, in Burgundy, specifically in Bone, in some of the smaller towns. Uh, but for Alsace, as it's it's always surprising to me with the uh, centuries of conflict and warfare that they still have you know so much history, uh, and many of these buildings uh, and villages were spared uh, the constant bombing in World War One, World War Two, um, and many of the conflicts you know from the uh, 17th century onward between France and Germany. So let's see if uh, we can see if I can actually find just scrolling through in the uh, event that we might have missed Corinne or Francois. Um, doesn't seem to be the case. Um, Thanks for uh, joining us, Grand Vin and the court professor and uh, everybody else. Um, I know that as soon as, so they need five minutes. So um, if you don't mind uh, uh, me rambling on, uh, we will get Corinne and Francois uh, on the, you know, on the old horn. Uh, good to see you too. Hello, uh, all the friends out there. I hope that you're uh, staying safe. Um, I hope that you're able to enjoy a, a glass or two uh, every evening. Um, because uh, I think that's the reason why uh, we're able to make it through. It's uh, friends, fellowship, um, you know, and some uh, some great vino in front of us that'll help us make it through uh, 2020 and uh, beyond to where we can all get back together and you know spend that quality time. Another reason that we wanted to do. Uh, uh, a harvest overview and specifically with Alsace is the um, we know that we've got uh, the holiday season and Thanksgiving right around the corner and I couldn't think of a better wine region uh, that would pair with the you know the multitude of uh, dishes and cuisines um, and styles of, uh, of food that are going to be on the Thanksgiving dinner table uh, for many of us you know uh, Everyone's got a, a, a different way of celebrating Thanksgiving, you know, some uh, maybe for a, a chance for it to be intimate for, you know, just a few family members. Uh, there are many of us, myself included, that being a Cowboys fan, um, football has always been a part of the Thanksgiving festivities. Um, so, you know, what better wine to have with chips and dip before you get into the uh, tryptophan laden turkey in the afternoon and by having either a, a pinot gris or a riesling to go with the chips and dip while you're watching the detroit lions or the dallas cowboys so uh they will be on in here in just a moment again thanks for uh holding tight with us while we wait for corinne and the pierre spar team to join us um, looks like they were having some uh, technical difficulties, so uh, they will be on shortly. So again, you know, uh, let's make sure that, you know, any questions that you might have for uh, Corinne and the team, certainly uh, write those down, put those in the chat, and uh, we shall certainly get to them uh, when, they, uh, when Corinne finally gets on. So yet any, uh, another view of the, uh, the Mombourg uh, looking north as it uh, heads into uh, Schoenenburg and Riekevier. Um, 
you know, essentially on that uh, northern uh, border of the, uh, the hog run. And a slightly higher part of the Mamborg as it looks towards Siegelsheim, um, you know, where you've got uh, Schlossberg and uh, the extension of uh, uh, Verstentum, um, you know, right here uh, on the uh, slope right before you as it heads into the Vosges mountain range. So it looks like uh, we'll have uh, Corinne and the uh, guys on in just a moment. Um, of course here, uh, you know, what I think is uh, to many people, the, uh, the future of Alsace with the quality of the cremants that are now being released out of the region. Uh, Pierre Spar has made Cremant for a number of years, both the uh, Brut Reserve as well as the Brut Rosé. Uh, both wines are aged for 18 months on the lees as a minimum. So uh, you know, for many Cremants, uh, we're looking at nine months as a minimum for the AOP law, uh, but the, uh, additional, uh, the additional time on the lees for uh, these wines, you know, it imparts a little bit more complexity uh, and depth. And I know as we um, get into uh, climate change being a, uh, a driver, I think that, you know, the uh, Cremants need a little bit more time on the lees to uh, develop some, uh, some complexity and are ready to drink. So it looks like Francois is with us. So here we are. Um, let's give them uh, just a second to connect. Francois, how are you, my friend? Hello, William. How are you? Ah, bon Hello. Hello. I'm, Hello. I'm here with Corinne. I hope the connection is okay. Uh, connection is great on our end. Um, yeah, a little bit. Of, it's slightly fuzzy, but uh, we certainly get the audio. So thank you so much for joining us today. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, we had a little problem because we changed uh, our. We change. Uh, we change the time in France. Oh, and, that's uh, right. Yes, and we we are one hour later. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, no. I I should have. You know, honestly, I should have thought about it. We change next week. So okay. uh, ours comes on the uh, 1st of November. Um, and of course, you know, we should have uh, taken into consideration you guys are a little further north. Uh, hence the, <laughs> hence the yeah, decision. I'm, I'm to, sorry. We, uh, we are here now. <laughs> earlier. Yes, you yeah. are. Yes, you it's, are. It's okay. Uh, mm. Well, again, thank you so much for uh, joining us. And so, you know, with that in mind, you know, let's jump right into things. Um, how was the 2020 vintage? Now that the fruit is generally in uh, the winery. Um, yes, yes, yes. It's, it's, almost, it's almost done. We have, uh, we have done the, the bigger part. Uh, we, are, we have still uh, some, some Gewürztraminer outside for the Vendange Tardive, late harvest. So it's still, it's still ripening outside and we are waiting for the botrytis to come and to, to give this special taste for the, for the last, last vintage. So, uh, you know, what are your opinions? You know, uh, I was just mentioning to uh, some of the, uh, the viewers about how, you know, warm and how structured the 2020 vintage has been uh, stylistically in Alsace. Um, and, you know, with that, how is the botrytis, you know, given that you know, you've had a pretty warm year? Has there been enough humidity in the air to, um, you know, at least start some botrytis in the uh, vineyards? No, there's no botrytis right now. We are waiting. <laughs> so the, the, <laughs> the, drought, the drought condition of the summer um, give a very uh, healthy, healthy grapes. There were no fungal disease at all. So everything was okay for all the all the, the harvest from the from the, the cremant from the sparkling to the to the grand cru everything was very pure very healthy and now we're waiting for botrytis for vanoche tardive but it was good to have no disease uh, right now <laughs> that that is so you know what what is the uh, what are the next uh, couple of weeks you know in the uh, forecast look like well, we had th there's some rain uh, actually. Um, it's the the weather is uh, is coming to winter to fall to winter, and uh, we had a, um, a whole night of uh, of rain uh, two weeks ago. 
So now it's going to, to turn brown, pink, and, and to have botrytis, but it's just the beginning. So we are, I think we are going to wait for two or three weeks to, to pick the, the, the late harvest. Wow. Because um, usually it isn't this late, is it? Sorry? Usually, uh, VT, you know, you, you usually don't get it this late. You know, usually you'll start to get... You know, yes, to, yes, to, yes. It's, it's usually it's usually that late, but um, we are not in a hurry now. It's it's uh, only an, uh, um, a small amount of of grapes, so we have time. It's we we'll, yes we we are we are going to wait. It's no no problem. So you know, uh, this is a question for the VT uh, Gewurz. What specific plots um, apart from Mamborg are you uh, utilizing for uh, for your VT? For yes. The yes, we have we have ten plots for uh, we we kept outside for uh, for 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 VT for late harvest and they are all around uh, Bebelheim except just one, uh, which is uh, in the in the north of uh, of Alsace near Dorlisheim. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, it's uh, they're, 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 yes in the in the vineyard they are. Reason they are they, um, they are um, cut uh, for specifically for for late harvest with very low yield uh, in order to uh, for the maturation for the ripening to to go quite quite uh, quickly. Mm. So it's a, it's a speci special work uh, outside in the vineyard. Mm. Well, and now uh, and now and now the nature will help us or not <laughs> to it's it's we, we we are not we are not always uh, winning each each year sometimes no, there's no way and uh, we pick the grapes and and make um give us some you know with high amount of sugar but with no botrytis you can't you can't have a good vete uh totally understandable well our fingers are crossed for you uh yeah thank uh, you <laughs> is kind to give you just enough botrytis for us to have a, a, a beautiful 2020 VT. Um, uh, is there, uh, you know, any, because, you know, we haven't, we haven't seen any uh, SGN. Um, do you get a little bit of Selection Grand Nob uh, with any of the plots or is it? Uh, uh, we don't, we don't or... yeah, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. It, it will depend on the amount of sugar we have uh, when, we, when, we, when we go and pick the grapes. So we can do, uh, on, on these 10 plots, we can do or uh, VT or Selection Grenoble SGN. Mm. Okay, well, that's good to know. Well, mm. now that we've got a, uh, an understanding of the 2020 vintage and what to expect, uh, let's talk a little bit about the 2019 that's about to be released to the uh, United States market. So uh, although you got a chance to you know, really see those wines in tank, not necessarily being at uh, Maison Spar for the uh, harvest. Uh, what are your initial impressions there? Oh, the, the, nine, the 200, 2019, <laughs> they, they are, uh, actually they are still in tanks. We are just beginning to, to put them in bottles and they are very nice wines. Oh. It's not my wine. I'm, I, I'm, I, I inherit it of them, but I'm quite uh, proud. I'm, I'm quite proud, proud of yes. uh, of what was done because um, they are very typical wines um, with not a lot of sugar. The the, the sugar are, are reducing um, in more the, the years go. Um, we are trying in Alsace to reduce the amount of sugar. And here for the for the Maison Pierre Spar, the sugar are very low, so it's it's really you 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 it's, we are going back to the real Alsatian wines. There's no there's no sugar no, no not too much sugar to um, to to give those wines. Um, well, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm I can't find my words, but really it's it's really typical and gastronomic wines. I see. So more, more classic, you know, uh, yeah. you know, more, more character, you know, more, more typical of the, the region. What yeah. vintage? It's, it's, is, the, would... it's the structure, the structure, the, 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 the wines are full bodied and it's not the, the, the sugar that give the structure. It's really a uh, low yield and, uh, and, uh, and tannins and, and it's very interesting. 
Um, so what vintage or vintages would you compare 2019 to? Mm. Uh, maybe 2012. Okay. Because, because there, there was quite a nice acidity and, uh, and a big structure and dry wine. So yes, I will, I will compare to, to well, 2012. I see. And, you know, with that in mind, what would you compare the 2020 vintage to? Would that be more um, like a 2015 <laughs> or? Two, um, 2003. Three? As, uh, so very Yes, warm. because, yeah, it was very, very early, very early harvest, low yield and very concentrated grapes, uh, very drought condition and, and high temperature during harvest. So it's more like 23. Wow. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mille yeah. Trois, yeah. The Mille Trois, the Mille Trois, yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, you know, with that in mind, how, you know, as, as warm as it was, what's your feeling on the Cremants then? Um, oh. How do you think that the 2020 for Cremant is going to turn out? Yeah, um, the difference between uh, 2003 and, and 2020, 2020 is that nowadays we are more used to go and pick the grapes in August. And this time we were really ready to go and we, we, we went to, to pick the grapes on the 26th of August. So I think it's one of the earliest uh, year uh, for harvest uh, to keep the acidity in the grapes. So the Cremant are very, very full of promises because they were really very healthy and, um, and uh, the acidity is here and the amount of sugar is just what we need. It's, that is around, uh, around 11, 11 uh, al uh, potential alcohol. Okay. So nature gave, gave <laughs> all what we needed to, to, to make very good Cremant. And this time we picked, uh, it, it's the first time in uh, Maison Pierre Spar that we try to make Cremant uh, with Pinot Gris. And uh, I think it, was, it will be a very particular uh, Cremant because we want to age it in barrel. So really? it's, it's for one or two, it's for in one or two years, a very little amount, but we will try because it's, because it's funny and it's, Yes, I think it, it's, uh, it's going to be something very interesting. So let's see. <laughs> Wait and see. I, I would agree, but only the Pinot Gris. So it won't be the Oak Soir. You won't use any of yes. the other Cremant varieties. Yes, uh, in yes. Mm -hmm. All the other Cremant are in, uh, in stainless steel tank uh, with uh, thermoregulation uh, and um, classical, classical, uh, classical way. Yes, to keep the aromas and to keep the, the, the fruity and the freshness of the, of the Cremant d'Alsace. I see. Mm -hmm. um, well, then how is the, uh, you know, how's the rosé going to end up, you know, with mm -hmm. the uh, Pinot Noir as, as ripe as the uh, 2020 vintages? Yes, it was very easy, easy to, to have the color. The color is very nice. It's, it's really pink and a, a fresh, uh, fresh pink uh, color. And the fruits are, is very interesting. It's, uh, it's like a black currant or small berries. So this year it was, it was really very easy to make creme en rosé with Pinot Noir because of the healthy, uh, healthy grapes and the, 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 the ripeness of the, of the grapes make the color, uh, uh, leave the color very easy. So yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be, um, to be a good, a good creme en rosé, I think. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, one thing that, you know, uh, uh, Pierre Spar uh, focuses on in terms of how they approach harvest and the blending, um, you know, is looking at soil type along mm -hmm. with the grape varieties. So, you know, with the 2019 and 20 vintages, I know that you weren't involved in the 2019, but certainly in the 20s, were, was there oh. anything that you noticed about the 20 vintage? Um, and how that affected specific plots? Yeah, are you talking about Cremant or generally? Just, just in general, you know. Yes, uh, in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We have we have um, a majority of uh, limestone uh, soils in uh, in Maison Pierre Spar, 
but um, but some some uh, vineyards in the north of Alsace are on granite and gray, and um, we usually for for the moment we we leave them apart. We separate all those plots because uh, it's it's always easier to um, to blend what you what we want afterwards. In, in when when we have all separated, you can blend after. So we put everything separated and then we'll see. Don't we'll, uh, we'll begin, I think for the Cremant, we will begin next week, uh, the, the tasting for blendings and for the steel wines um, in December. So we'll, we'll see, but um, this time, this year, uh, the, all the limestone were really generous. Um, we, we had even um, very high uh, potential alcohol. For, for example, for Pinot Gris, we have like 16 degrees of alcohol, uh, wow. natural alcohol. Yeah, so this will, this will be blend with, um, with low alcohol to, to have good wines and to, um, but yes, it, the, the limestone were really generous this time. I see. So do you anticipate, you know, especially with the Pinot Gris and the uh, Gewürztraminer, um, with those high potential alcohol levels, do you anticipate there being uh, higher levels of residual sugar being left in the wines? Or yes, are the plans to still make them mm -hmm. dry? Yeah, oh, we, we'll, we'll have both. Uh, okay. some, I think some, some cuvee will, will be uh, very gastronomic with no more than 10 grams per, per liter. And some other like vieille vigne will have more sugar because naturally they, have, they, are, they were really high and will probably rise until 20 grams per liter of residual sugar. But by tasting them, when you have a very big structure, when you have a little tannins and uh, you, you, don't, you don't feel like there is really 20 grams per liter in the wine. Yeah, and I think that the wines, they benefit from the ageability, you know, with a yes, little bit of yes, sugar. And, yes. You know, as mm -hmm. those wines start to get into, mm -hmm. you know, year five, 10 and 15, you don't get the sensation of, of, of sugar, you know, yeah, it, that's uh, cool. mm -hmm. it, it, it blends back into the wine. So uh, I am very excited about, you know, what's going to happen with the uh, 2020 vintage. Uh, is there, um, you know, is there anything, you know, that you learned about this vintage, about the 2020 in with, you know, uh, with a, in the midst of a pandemic, did you, um, what, was there anything that, you know, uh, that had, that was so very different than in yes. other things. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, the, the technical things were all a little new for me because it was a new team, a new, um, new materials, a new press. Don't, uh, lots of things were new, but well, I know how to, to elaborate wine. So that everything was okay. Um, the, the new thing with the, the pandemic, with the COVID was the, I don't know the word in English, but solidarity uh, between all the team were very, um, very, very strong, and um, and every everybody was looking on others to to see if everything was okay. So that was really interesting this year because um, um, we wanted to go through through this harvest. We were we we had this this danger, like uh, if if there was one person, uh, one illness, when one person uh, COVID positive, we, uh, we were afraid that we were, we were going to stop the harvest and close the, the, the winery. So all the people were looking after, after the others and that was very nice uh, during harvest. Now that's, that's great to hear. It's, you know, we, we, we talk about teamwork and how, you know, it takes a village to, uh, you know, bring a harvest or raise a wine. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's heartening to hear that, um, that that the team stuck together, you know, for yes. the, mm -hmm. you know, for, you know, for, for the promise of, you know, bringing in a, a fantastic potential harvest. Yes, um, yes. Is there anything mm -hmm. that you want to, you know, share anything else with the uh, team uh, before we let you get back, you know, since, uh, you know, technically, yeah. well, it has been moved back an hour. So I guess it's... Uh, no, it's it's four thirty for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's not it's not uh, it's not late. No, it's it was it was really okay. It was very interesting. I like really I, I really like Cremant. So 
this this year it was uh, um, like a, a game for me to to elaborate all, all these cremants but it was interesting until the end until the the we picked the, the grand cru the mambour uh, because they were really a, a good concentration and uh, and the, the fermentation are still working on very gently very but the the wine are really generous and uh, i think it will really be uh, very interesting the the the, poten the aging potential and the and the quality of these wines well i cannot wait to uh, try them <laughs> and hopefully uh next year when we have medical intervention uh we might be able to do that in person so yeah yeah good so uh, thanks to you and to uh, Francois for uh, bringing in Thank another you. great harvest. Thanks for being with us uh, on uh, on this IG call. And it thanks for so that you joined us. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, Thank so, you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. See you soon. Au revoir. Au revoir. Yeah, join us in the uh, future as... Uh, we're actually going to be meeting up with uh, Guillaume Boudet um, of uh, HDV uh, for a 2020 harvest overview uh, in uh, November. So, um, you no, know, check us out on Wilson Daniels IG at that time. Stay safe. Cheers. <laughs>